What's going on everybody? We're in my kitchen today because we're gonna be doing a little baking. Bake some snacks to take out on the boat. No, I'm just kidding. We're in my kitchen because it's cold as crap outside and I've got the stuff that I need to talk about is in here with me. So we're gonna do it in here. We're gonna be painting this boat, the base layer. And what I went with is Seahawk Alumahawk paint. I've used it before. Really like this paint, not very cheap. Uh, the color I went with was tan. Now I reached out to them and asked them if they could send me a boat, a picture of a boat that's been painted with their tan color because I didn't really want to trust just a little chip that you see online. And they sent me a picture of a boat that had the worst lighting I ever seen in my life. Most of the boat was in the shade. So I just rolled the dice and got the tan. I've had it for like a month, but as soon as I opened this paint, I knew like automatically that I hated it. It is not gonna work for me. And I reached out to Alumahawk or Seahawk. Again, Seahawk is the actual company. Alumahawk is the paint. Ask them if there's any way to darken the paint or change the pigment, and they never replied back to me. So, uh, and this paint is specifically made for aluminum boats, so it's not like you can just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and, you know, get some darker color paint and mix in with it. Cause, I mean, maybe you could, I don't know, but I don't want to mess up the properties of the paint. So what I decided to do is mix Alumahawk paint with Alumahawk paint. I dug around and I found a pint of black that I used last year and I didn't have very much. I mean, I probably had like a quarter of an inch of paint in the very bottom of it and I added all of that to here and mixed it up and I'll show you guys what it looked like. Well, I got me a piece of cardboard, a little test piece and I painted all of it with what was straight out of the can, which is this right here. As you can see, it's almost a yellowish, I mean, super light color. And I, this is the camo pattern I'm going with. I'm not 100% sold on this brown, just so you know. I'm probably gonna change that, but that's the whole different video. We're talking about the paint, the base layer today. And this is what it came out with. And I mixed that black that I had, and it got me this color right here. It was kind of turning it gray, and I don't want to go with gray. What color I'm looking to get is right here. I'm wanting like the tan color, the base color of mossy oak, which is more like a, a olive tan maybe. Anyways, it's way far off from that, and I felt like this was getting too gray. So what I decided to do is order a pint of their John Boat Green and mix it with the tan. I did a little bit at a time, and what I ended up using was about, I don't know, a quarter to a third of this pint. It's probably right down to this black label, which they, it wasn't completely full, you know, when I got it. And I added a little bit at a time, and this is what I came up with. I, I got me a little test strip here, and every time, you know, I, I painted a stripe on there. This lighting kind of sucks in here, but this was just with the black mixed with it. And then I kept adding green till I got down. And what I ended up was this color right here. It's, it's pretty close. It's not spot on, but it's gonna work. And it's a whole lot better than this and a heck of a lot better than their tan color that came straight out of the can. I just wanna tell you guys that because I, I know I'm gonna have a hundred people ask what color did I use for a base on this boat? Because everybody always asks and I really don't know what to tell you because this is not a color that you're gonna be able to get from Alumahawk. The best I can tell you is it's Alumahawk tan, one gallon with a splash of black and about a quarter of a pint of the John Boat Green to darken it up. And like I said, it's not exactly what I was wanting, but I think it's gonna work. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of camouflage you saw on my test piece in there. So the base color isn't like hugely, hugely important, I don't think but uh, it's gonna look a lot better than the original color. So that's what color we're going with. Hopefully we have enough. That's what's gonna suck. Uh, the last 1436 boat I, I painted with a Lumahawk, I, I had to use over a gallon. So I might end up having to thin this out when I get to the inside of the boat when I'm painting it, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm not gonna thin the bottom part of the boat in this episode. Uh, if you've ever used a Luma Hawk before, you know this is some of the thickest paint you'll run across. This stuff is super, super thick, but it covers pretty good. Another thing I want to go over before we get into this is the methods of applying the paint. 
A lot of people ask me, why don't you spray the paint on? You can spray this paint, but I mean, that's a lot of work in my opinion. You can go to Harbor Freight and get one of them cheap $20 guns and just throw it away. But if you're using a regular cup gun and clean it up, that's extra work. You're going to have to tape stuff off. You're going to have to wait for a sunny day where, you know, it's not a lot of breeze, you know, a good weather day at least. And, you know, it's just a whole lot of steps that I'd rather not go through because I know rolling the paint on gives a good look. It doesn't look bad at all. And as long as you do it right, you won't have roller lines. Uh, and it's actually what they recommend for applying is brush, roller, or spray. They got spray last. Now you're going to have to thin the crap out of this. They suggest using MEK to thin this paint down and it says five to 10 percent and unless it's like in the middle of summer when it's super hot outside, you're probably going to be a lot closer to that 10 percent to thin this stuff down to get it pushed through a, a cup gun. So what we're going to be doing is I've always done on all these boats, you know, minus the Mastercraft because it was different, is we're going to use a cheap little roller and these cheap foam roller pads from Harbor Freight. I've said it before, these are the best ones I have used. I've gotten some from Lowe's and actually used with a Lumahawk and I don't know, the whatever they got in this paint will deteriorate them cheap rollers, the foam rollers from Lowe's because it'll end up eating away the ends of the, the roller and you'll have trash all in your paint, little pieces of roller. So I haven't had that problem with these. These are Avanti smooth to semi-smooth surfaces, four inch, half inch foam. I think a two pack is like four bucks. Every time I go to Harbor Freight, I get like a couple of these packs because I'm scared that I'm not gonna have enough and need to paint a boat. Because Harbor Freight is bad about running out of stuff. At least my Harbor Freight I go to. So that's what we're gonna do is roll this paint on like we've done before. Now, let's talk about the surface preparation. Uh, it's actually easier to lay this paint down on a previously painted surface. I'll go ahead and read you guys what they recommend for previously painted surfaces, the preparation. The surface must be clean and dry, free of wax, grease, and other contaminants. Scrape off all loose paints and sand with 180 to 220 grit sandpaper. Remove sanding residue with a tack rag. Touch up all bare areas with a Lumahawk and top with two full coats of a Lumahawk. So, I mean, that's pretty cut and dry. You know, you sand to get all the loose flakes off. And if you have any bare aluminum surfaces, you'll use this as a primer for those spots. And then, you know, put your two coats on. We don't have a previously painted surface. We're doing bare aluminum. So I'll read you what it says to do for that. Unpainted aluminum. The surface must be dry and free of grease, wax, dirt, and other contaminants. Sand with 80 grit sandpaper and clean. Wipe down with white vinegar prior to coating to etch the surface. Then clean the etched area with water and dry the area with clean rags. Follow with the isopropanol, wipe down, and dry the area with clean rags. Isopropanol alcohol. Okay, so the main difference is you sand with 80 grit sandpaper, which we've already done prior to putting the glove it on. And then you got to use white vinegar. White vinegar is cheapest crab you can find it anywhere. You wipe it down and to etch the surface. It's just gonna allow the paint to adhere to the aluminum. Then of course you get to the isopropanol alcohol. I don't even know what that is to be honest with you. So what I've done in the past when I use this is I just used um, acetone. So we've already sanded down the boat with 80 grit before we applied the glovet. But uh, does the glovet need to be sanded down? Uh, I'm not sure, I wasn't sure. Uh, in previous boat builds, I didn't do it. I just did the white vinegar thing, you know, washed it off, and then did like a acetone wipe down, then laid my paint on. I didn't have any problems with, you know, the, the paint not adhering to the glove, the epoxy spots. And also, like I said, I'm not use isopropanol alcohol, I use acetone. Well, to be thorough, I went ahead and gave Seahawk, which is the company, a call and asked them, I talked to a, a technician, and uh, I asked him about sanding down the glove at the epoxy spots, and he said that he would. So we're going to do that. We're just gonna hit the whole boat, all the spots with 80 grit one more time, just a real quick, just to kind of rough that surface up a little bit to allow the paint to stick better. I mean, it does make sense. And then I asked him about the isopropanol alcohol. I asked him, is acetone a good substitute and he said he would not use acetone because most of the acetone you find is diluted with water. I, 
I don't know. I haven't looked on the back of acetone. I've been getting what it is. But he said that alcohol is better to use in this situation. And then I asked him, well, what about denatured alcohol? Because I've never seen isopropanol alcohol. Maybe they have it on the shelf and I just haven't noticed it. But I don't recall seeing it. I said, what about denatured alcohol? And he said, yes. He said he would use that before acetone and it's a good substitute for the isopropanol alcohol. It doesn't say on here what the working temperature really needs to be. I would say fall and spring would be the best times to use this paint because it's so thick. And another thing about this paint is it dries really, really fast. So in the wintertime, you're gonna deal with super, super thick paint. And in the summertime, you're gonna deal with it drying too fast and it's hard to maintain a wet edge. Uh, right now, it's pretty cold outside. I wanna say it's like mid 40s. So I'm gonna wait till later on in the afternoon, let everything warm up a little bit and start doing all this prep on it because I, I don't want it to be super cold because I don't wanna have to fight super thick paint. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, I just wanted to throw that information out to you guys with me coloring this paint. Like I said, I'm using the same brand of paint I don't see why it would be any kind of trouble with mixing those. I would not recommend using any other brand of paint to try to get a different color. You might be totally fine with the tan color. I love the John Boat Green color. The John Boat Green is very, very, it's actually this color right here, the green of Mossy Oak Bottomland, almost perfect. I wish I could get this in a spray can to use for my stencils. And I also wanted to go ahead and clear those things about the uh, the glove, they do recommend sanding your your epoxy spots before painting. And uh, and of course, if if you want to use denatured alcohol, it's a good substitute. All right, that was a, uh, a lot of going over stuff. Hopefully, y'all are still watching. Those of you are asleep, wake up. We got some work to do. All right, they said 80 grit. We got a brand new pad of 80 grit on here. I'm not going to just sand the crap out of it. I think the surface, the bare aluminum parts is fine. Mainly going to be focusing on just roughing up these epoxy spots all over the boat. And uh, we're probably going to make a freaking mess. And that sanding, that means we're going to have to clean it all up again. But I'm going to try to do it right. So let's get to work. All right, now I'm just gonna take a, a damp rag and wipe down this whole boat on the outside. Now we're gonna etch it with distilled white vinegar. I just poured some in this bucket right here, probably way more than I need, but go ahead and wipe it down with this. Oh, it smell like Easter up in here. All right, now we're gonna go back over it with water once again. Wipe it down with water. It's turning into too much like work. Whew, now it says wipe it down with a clean rag. Here we go. Now it says drink a beer, I think. Now we're gonna wipe it down with denatured alcohol. And I didn't say it earlier, but don't do all this stuff and then paint it tomorrow. If you're gonna do all this, you need to paint it like pretty soon, within the next hour, I'd say. Because, I mean, you're doing all this prep and cleaning stuff, and you, the surface is ready. You just let it sit here, even in the garage, dust, who knows what bugs, I don't know. Anything could contaminate it, so. We want to go ahead and paint it as soon as possible. So this is the last step, thank goodness. And uh, we'll be <laughs> actually putting some paint on this thing. This paint job ought to get me some kind of award.
All right, so this first coat is not as crucial as the second coat. You don't want any runs and drips and stuff like that because it's gonna show up on the second coat. But as far as having roller marks, don't stress out about it. If the first coat doesn't look as good, just try to really do a good job on the second coat. Right now, we're just trying to get that base layer on and we can cover up any imperfections like roller marks on the next one. But um, we want to have a wet edge. This paint is really thick and dries really, really fast. So it's kind of crucial to try and keep a wet edge. So you don't want to just like roll one strip all the way down, then come back and then roll the next part of it because you're going to be overlapping paint. Well, this paint over here that you rolled first is going to be dry. And then when you overlap it, you're going to have a roller mark where those two overlap. If you keep it wet the whole time, you will have a less chance of having a roller mark. Does that make any sense? I hope so. So I got, I got myself all set up here, my little weenie roller. And what I'm going to do is start right here in this channel and work my way down kind of slow. I'll get the edges like so, and then go in the middle like so, and just work my way all the way down. The bottom of the boat, you know, you're not going to see the bottom of the boat. We didn't really care that much about the bottom of the boat, but we're going to go ahead and paint. Uh, really what we're worried about is the size. That's what everybody sees. I and mean, that's one reason I like to start out on the bottom of the boat and kind of get your feel for it, how fast the paint's drying. And that way when you get to the sides where it counts, you'll know how much time you really got to work with. Picking up what I'm laying down, let's paint. Once you get into these vertical surfaces, I found it best to take a little brush, a little throwaway brush, and kind of cut in once you're fixing the paint where the roller is not gonna hit. Even these rivets, they're kind of sunken in. Just do a little section at a time. Here we go. We got one coat on. <laughs> Boat looks more beat up now. We got some color to it. But that's how they all go. Covered pretty good. No major snags. Used almost all that paint that y'all saw me pour in to that thing. Y'all see this right here? That's what I'm talking about with that glove. It <laughs> Make it look like you got drips in your paint. I should have sanded that down a little more. That camouflage will hide it. Well, all right, guys, that is done for today. We'll put the second coat on tomorrow. Be done with this one. Let's knock his second coat out. 
All right, quick tips. We're going to be using these little cheap brushes from Harbor Freight. If you give a crap about what your paint job is going to look like, use one of these. Do this to it before you actually put it in paint because these things have tons and tons of loose bristles that will end up coming out in your paint. I've noticed if you do this first, you'll get most of the really loose ones. You might still have a few that want to come out. You see all these bristles? Try to do that first and get some of them loose ones out before you have to start digging them out of your paint job. There we go, we got a paint job on the tracker. It, it came out pretty good. It's got a little bit of texture to it, but I don't know how you could do a Luma Hawk paint without getting texture. Maybe if you thinned it out, maybe we'll explore that with the inside of the boat. But I have over a half a gallon left, only two coats is fine for this. I mean, it covered really good, uh, but we might play around with it, you know, just to see for an experiment. But uh, like I said, I'm happy with it. If you're wanting like a really, really slick paint job and you're not doing camo, uh, you know, you might want to try and, and figure out, ask them, you know, how to get a smoother texture because this is the third boat I painted with a Luma Hawk and all three of them have a slight texture to it. Um, it could have something to do with the weather. But, I mean, it was a, a lot warmer today when I put the second coat on versus yesterday with the first coat and, and the second coat did come out with a slight, you know, roller texture. But I mean, it's doesn't bother me any. I mean, I'm totally fine with it. Even if I wasn't going to be doing camo on the boat, I mean, I'd be okay with it. My whole channel is built around John boats, but so I, I kind of feel weird saying this, but it's just John boat. You know, it's not like I'm going to take this to the Sima show or anything. But hopefully, this video being a little more in depth and reaching out and, and answering some questions that I had personally can help somebody out there. Uh, and I think the last uh, few boats I've done, you know, I just kind of been like. You know, I'm, I'm painting the boat this color and, you know, I'll just really edit quick with me, you know, rolling the paint on or whatever. So kind of wanted to take a little bit more time and like I said, be a little more thorough with this one. Now, I followed all the steps that they, you know, asked for. So if this paint starts chipping off and looking bad, I'm gonna have a talk with somebody down there at Seahawk. But I think it's gonna be fine. I've been very pleased with this paint in the past. All right, up next is the camo, and uh, we got a little bit of decision to do as far as the other two colors of the stencils I'm going to use. Uh, I'm still kind of up in the air about it. I hate if I do uh, the, the dark green and black, it's going to look exactly like the skiff pretty much, even though it's a totally different stencil this time. So uh, I don't know. I might play around with some other color schemes, you know, between now and, and actually laying the camo down. Well, all right, guys, I really appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.